Hello, welcome to the show. Good to have your company. It's finally here. The 2013 season has kicked off and what a way to kickstart the year. Coming up on the show this week, we'll bring you the highlights between Perth and Bayswater and Inglewood and Floriot. We also catch up with Perth Glory Young Guns Jack Clisby and Duba Makechi. We also catch up with Perth footballer Robbie Gasper, who spent the best part of the decade playing in Indonesia and Malaysia, and we unearth another rising star. But first, Florida Athena has arguably been the catalyst in showcasing former Socceroo Stan Lazaridis on the national stage. In a new segment for 360, Stan recalls a memorable moment while playing in the English Premier League with West Ham. I'm lining up in Old Trafford, right? You have to be to the minute at Old Trafford because it's beam round to China, billion here, billion there. Anyway. We get into the tunnel about 45 seconds early. Man United's already there. And we've come in at 45 seconds, you're told you can't leave the tunnel. Mate, it seemed like it was about two hours in there. So 45 seconds, and I'm sitting there and I'm concentrating and said, right, 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 don't look left, don't look left, don't look left, I'm looking left. So I look left. So I'm having a look at this team, I'm seeing Giggs, Skulls, Beckham, Ferdinand, uh, Cantona, and then standing next to me, right, and I've turned, and like, Man United is supposed to be f facing this way, this fella's faced this way, just looking at me. So I'm on the other side, looked, looked over, it's Roy Keane. He goes to me, Ozzy, Ozzy, you're a dad. <laughs> like, it went like a bolt of lightning went through me. I've got Roy, this is a dream for me, mate. See that, I'm gonna remember what you just told me, mate. I would be out, out back in West Australia, you know, Shawshank Redemption, that style. Okay, so he started laughing and Rio goes, mate, you're not going to get him, you'll, let, you'll end up making you laugh. But I have to say, I ran out in the field and it, it was just, it, it's, it's, it's uh, intimidating. I think it was 78,000, 76, whatever, 76,000 people. But anyway, I just thought you'd let you know that one. Perth versus Bayswater and Inglewood versus Florida Athena. Pride on the line for all clubs involved. Let's take a look at the Match of the Week highlights. It was a match five months in the making. Perth, under the stewardship of Mauro Marchioni, were eager to take the lead in the first half. By the 19th minute, that plan came to fruition. Daniel Machewski putting the home team in front. Perth pressed on in the first half but squandered several opportunities to increase their lead. In the second half, Bayswater found some inspiration and started to throw everything they had at the Perth defence. Their hard work paid off and in the 71st minute, the Colombian marvel, Gustavo Marulanda, found the equaliser. Bayswater continued to apply pressure and six minutes later took the lead through Brian Farrell. City held on to take the full points. The night series winners starting round one on a high, but their coach Chris Coyne disappointed with a lacklustre first half. Oh, yeah, I'm happy with the result, but I won't accept the uh, first half performance. You know, everything we spoke about, everything we wanted to work on in, in the game, um, we didn't get. You know, it took them 30, 40 minutes, and I don't want to be taking people off before half time for, for not working hard enough for me, and I won't, won't accept it. I never played like that, and I won't accept it as a coach. I'd be disappointed because uh, the first half we basically dominated the game. We had the two. For me, if you consider that the best player on the field for them was Gianni, the goalkeeper, he saved them, he kept them into the game. The other main match was played at Integra Stadium, Inglewood United hosting Florian Athena. Last season's grand finalists started strong. Athena's Ludo boy missed a clear opportunity in the fourth minute. 20 minutes later, controversy when United defender Jason Colley appeared to have handled the ball in the opposition penalty area, but referee Paul Anderson waved away appeals, leaving Florian players and their bench in disbelief. Inglewood missed a great chance to take the lead just before half-time. Scores were locked at nil-nil. Floriot came out in the second half with renewed vigour and it paid off in the 54th minute when Boy and Benny Cavadio combined to set up Ian McMurray to slot the ball home. United super sub Matt Danskin gave the home team reason to smile after a minute of running onto the pitch 
Danska nodding the ball home after a right wing cross. The match could have gone either way in the closing minutes, but both teams were left sharing the spoils. The game, yeah, I think it was a fair result. Um, you know, Florida had a few chances early and we managed to repel them, but I thought in, for the most part of the second half we controlled the game and didn't take advantage of, of that control. But uh, yeah, first game of the season, I thought we gradually got better as the game went on, so happy with that part. In other results, Sorrento had a comfortable win, thumping the NTC. Armadale demolished Balcata to signal their intentions for 2013. ECU took away three points after their 2 0 win over Bunbury, and Sterling defeated Night Series finalists Coburn. Looking ahead to round two, Perth should be too strong for the NTC at home. Floriot face a tough encounter against Bunbury. ECU face off against Sterling. Coburn host a hungry Armadale. A Charity Shield rematch is in store for Sorrento and Balcata, and Bayswater faces another tough test against Inglewood. Well, in the last 12 months, Inglewood can pride itself on exploring a couple of uh, extraordinary players, Dumba Makechi and Jack Clisby. They join, join me now on Football 360. First of all to Jack, WA Football of the Year in 2012. Jack, welcome to Football 360. It's been a bit of an uh, awesome ride for yourself from Inglewood in the State League last year. You were the best player uh, on the park uh, according to the, uh, to the league. Yeah. Now, now you're with Perth Glory, uh, had a good couple of caps already. What's the experience been like for you? Yeah, it's been tremendous so far. I've, um, I've had a good couple of games, a good run into the um, sort of the end of the season. Um, I got my chance with Ferguson, and unfortunately he's gone now. But um, yeah, I've been working under Alistair, and things seem good at the club. What's the uh, experience like stepping up from the state league into the A league? It's quite a quite a big difference. I mean, most of most of the games a lot quicker decision making, and you've got to move the ball quicker, be aware of players around you. Quite a bit of a step up, yeah. I think the most exciting part was definitely my debut. Uh, it just got tingles down the spine and that, and it was stepping out to probably the biggest crowd I've played in, and it was just an amazing feeling. And joining me also is Dumba Makechi, another Inglewood United success story. Dumba, it's been, a, uh, I guess, an exciting uh, period in your life as well, in your playing career as well. Um, your experience so far with Perth Glory, stepping up again from the State League, uh, must be quite chuffed with yourself. Yeah, no, it's been a very quick transition from um, me playing for Inglewood into the youth team, then straight into the first team. It's been a very good learning experience and I'm enjoying every bit of it. What What's the most important tip that you, you could possibly pass on to, uh, to those aspiring A-League players here in Western Australia? I think the main difference is how hard you work because at that state league level, I think everyone is on the same level, but I think the ones who've got that work ethic end up making it to the next level. Bankwest, happily supporting the communities of WA. After spending two seasons with Croatian giants Hajduk Split, a career in Indonesia and Malaysia beckoned for Perth footballer Robbie Gaspar. He shares his experiences with 360. Robbie, your career has obviously taken you across Australia and around the world even. You've spent the last seven years in Indonesia. How was that experience? Indonesia is fantastic. I recommend it to anyone to go to Asia and give it a go. You know, like close to close to home, and they love their football. Massive crowds. You know, the great lifestyle as well. I knew I probably wasn't going to play in the big leagues of Europe, so I thought Asia's the next best thing. You're at Hajduk as a teenager, and then by 21, you're up in Brunei. How did that come about? I was here playing in the state league um, for Perth, and then the opportunity came to go to Brunei. Great experience, you know, playing for a prince. Anything stick out from that time? I mean, obviously, you said playing for a prince. Was there any <laughs> incident that was a bit unusual? <laughs> oh, when we first got, you know, first got there, you know, him just picking me up in his brand new Porsche, driving me around Brunei, and then also him coming to the game. He doesn't have to do a warm up, you know, just comes in captain's armband and um, yeah, straight out. At the time, did you think you'd spend a decade in the region? Obviously, including the spell at Sabah. No, I didn't actually. I came home after that, then I spoke to Pete Butler and I said, listen, Pete, I'm looking to go somewhere and play. And he said, I'll give us a week. And within two days, he goes, Rob, I've got an opportunity for you to go and play in Malaysia at Sabah. And I thought, 
yeah, why not? So I went up there, had a trial and um, signed for them. And yeah, first year, we had a great year. Made the FA Cup semi-final, final of the Malaysia Cup, finished fourth in the league. Um, and I had a really good season myself. There's also a bit of a fascination uh, for yourself with 55,000 followers on Twitter. What was your relationship like with the fans? I think it was pretty good. They were fantastic people and that's so you know, if you ask for an autograph, you give them an autograph, ask for a photo, you give them a photo and always try to sort of do the right thing up there and I think they love Australian players. You, you mentioned in Malaysia playing in front of 85,000, what sort of crowds do you get in Indonesia? It would range from anywhere between 25 and 45,000, like we played against procedure at uh, you know, the Gloria Buncano, the Sinaian Stadium, had 65,000 there. Regularly you play in front of Indonesia, 15, 20, 25, 30,000 because wherever you go the stadiums are full. You know, they love their football. Just the passion there is just similar to Europe, and I think it's even bigger than Europe. Something I think Australia needs to tap into because we're so close. You've been a supporter of the Home of Football campaign. What sort of an impact do you think having a central state-of-the-art training facility would have on the number of Asian teams coming down to Perth? Oh, I think Perth is such a fantastic place to come and sort of do your training. We've always got great weather. You're only like four or five hours away from sort of Malaysia, four hours from Indonesia, and um, get Australia closer with Asia, which I think, you know, is the way to go breaks down barriers. I think people underestimate football and how powerful it is. Can you tell us a little bit about your involvement with the PFA and what you've been doing off the field? Back in 2011, Brendan Schwab called me up and asked me whether I wanted to get involved with the PFA up in Indonesia and I said, yeah, I'd love to. We want to work with the federations, with the clubs, with the managements to see football move forward. At the end of the day, if everyone works together, everyone wins. And just finally, Robbie, what's, what's next for you? Back in Perth now and I'm looking to play State League. But I don't like to make too many plans, like especially in football. You know, if I get an opportunity to go back to Asia, I'll have a think about it. But I'm um, just really enjoying my time being back home. Can't beat this, you know, look at the weather. You sort of forget when you're away how good it is here. And after being so long away, it's, it's great. Really enjoy it. I've started playing Little League at my local club and yeah, it just sort of grew from there but my mum gave me the option of either soccer or t-ball so I chose football. The best thing is that it's a team sport so as much as it is athletic and very demanding it's really sociable as well and you get to meet a lot of great people. And would you like to play professional? At the moment I'm trying to get started into organising a scholarship for America. Hopefully that will be a stepping stone for me to be able to play professional soccer. What's your playing position and how would you describe yourself as a player? Well I play number nine or central attack. The way I did, would describe myself as a player is probably better at playing the ball through and setting up the play. So who was your favourite player and why? My favourite player has probably been Wayne Rooney because I support Manchester United. How do you celebrate a goal? Usually it's sort of just a lot of cheering. Sometimes the aeroplane comes out. <laughs>And that wraps up another busy show for this week. Hope your team was a winner on the weekend. We'll be back again next week. In the meantime, Jamie Harnwell will be filling in while I'm away on my honeymoon. I'll see you back next month. Until then, it's bye for now.